Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We are still in full flow with the Audi A4 and today after Tom, who is over there, finishing up the inside of the arches. Say hi Tom. Hello Tom. <laughs> so he is finishing up the inside of the tubs that we would have seen in the previous episode. But today our job is, well for me, while he's doing it, is I'm going to be sorting out some of this flooring. Some of the places on the floor do have some rust spots. So with a grinder with a wire wheel on, I'm going to clean them up, ready to wrap them. So, not much more else to say, other than, let's go.
So the first stage now that it's being flipped over is we've uh, just gone around some of the points where they're a bit rusty. We've rust treated them all, then um, etch primed them just before we get to the point of cleaning the flooring. As you can see, we've also masked some areas where, for example, rear beam mounts here and here and from factory. They've got no under seal on them. They're dead smooth and flat, obviously, so they can mount nice and flush. So we've uh, masked all these areas off. Um, next step will just be to flip it back the other side, do a couple more areas, and then we'll uh, mask up the engine bay, ready to hit it with a Raptor. So let's go. Just like that. So we're near in time for raptoring. Let's go over here a minute. We've got a man who does air compressors for a living working on a air compressor, eh, Tom? Yeah. What was the matter of it? Just regulators fitted back to front as all. I think this old beauty, when was this, Tom? What was the date on this? I think that's an old girl, isn't it? It is, mate. March 1991. So this 30 year old compressor and she's a champ and uh, what makes this compressor really important is it was part of what I got inherited from my granddad after his passing. Along with um, the cutter that you saw in the other film, I've been lucky enough that, you know, I'd rather him be here, but it's kind of cool that his tools are helping us build what was his car and they've come in and been absolutely brilliant. So at the moment we've just masked up the rough edges where we're going to go and sheet over and uh, all the tub. We're not doing the engine bay because that'll be painted when I send it to my mate Ricky eventually. What we're using, Tom's used this quite a few times, Tintable Raptor. So we have the paint. Santorini Blow Pearl and uh, these have been quite good I bought a pack of these just off Amazon I think and they'll be being used to fill in the plug holes so what we got to do with this Tom? let's wrap the stuff mix it with the tin colour yeah get it on the floor there you go, as simple as that another another inherited tool you can see where I've got it all from. Quite a few. So, this was Grandad's as well. Good Schutz gun. 
So we'll mix up the Raptor. Tom seems to think that we need to do it outside. So, as I do trust him, that's what we're going to do. However, that is no easy task. I don't want Raptor on my 36. For some reason he doesn't want that speckly blue. Don't know why. But the perfect tool that I had made ages ago is this frame. And I can move uh, empty shells around with ease. Sadly, it's got a lift on it. We should have made paint the floor really easy. But the lift is on the frame. And we ain't moving that again, are we, Tom? No. So, we're going to use Tom's skates. This When his family watches, they're just going to think, oh, idiot. Right. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to lower it down. We're going to use the uh, engine crane on the front end. We'll lower the back end down onto this. Obviously, take the A-frames off. We're outside. It's actually a really still day. So it saves everything that's not mine in the unit getting covered in stuff that we don't want it to. And to be fair, it saves everything I do own from not being covered in blue. So yeah, we're a panel wipe and a sheeting over the top from getting it done. So let's go.
After a lot of work, a lot of time and a lot of stress, that is beautiful. A very own Tom Healy Picasso that is. And uh, yeah, over the moon. The floor on this car actually is really, yeah, factory straight to be fair. So dear old granddad, yeah, it was a, a good car to take over from him. But yeah, we had, some, we had our troubles, didn't we, Tom? Yes, we did. And what were they? Uh, a lot of pain. <laughs> Either raptor or colour. Yeah. And so, a gun. Yeah. <laughs> so, dear old granddad, I, I had a gun which I was inherited, and um, after the first can, well, that fell apart, didn't it? Yeah. That, it. Yeah, that's, so that fell apart. And then, so I had to run over to a unit where we've got local, who is a fiberglass guy. And he kindly loaned us his one. Thankfully, he had one. And uh, yeah, then we ran out of paint. We ran out of paint. We have got loads of paint, though. Actually, look. <laughs> Do you want it back? All over his forehead. <laughs> yeah. So we got that. We ended up run out of paint. So I had to get the missus to do a run and go get us some more. So we ended up using six cans of Raptor and probably what one and a half, what, about a liter of paint color in the end. Three quarters of a liter. Two hundred milliliters to a to a tin of Raptor. Roughly. Yeah. So 200 milliliters times six. There you go. 1.2 liters. So we ended up having to get a bit more, so I underestimated on that. So did I. Yeah, well, we thought four cans would be enough, but on this occasion, it wasn't. But we have done a lot. I mean, that's four arches. I've, um, what we've done was, I'm not too fussed about certain parts of the engine bay that you're never going to see. So it was decided that we would, uh, wrap the parts that you might once paint but once an engine's in it you wouldn't see any of this anyway but the main panels that you're going to see like all the arch tub and that tom done and the inside of the bay that'll all be painted smooth but anything below that line is color coded painted and wrapped um so yeah i mean this car's probably going to go off to paint a full paint job at some point and so but You've just got to try and imagine that floor with a load of silver stuff on. <laughs> and that's going to look really good. You might see some light patches like there and there. That's just where the uh, masking tape is underneath. And Tom didn't waste the material and I'll buy paint on top. So as you can see when you get close there, that's not a thin point. That is literally masking tape underneath. We didn't want to trap the raptor, did we, on the structural mountain points? No, exactly. The rear beam and the front front frame. Yeah, because from factory they did the same, didn't they? Yeah. So from factory, what we were, we've basically masked off like the points where the rear beam mounts, subframe mounts, etc., etc. They'd actually marked it off and then undersealed around them from factory, didn't they, Tom? Yeah, when you removed it and we tidied and cleaned it up, they were surprisingly really fresh, weren't they? Proper solid metal, no. Yeah. No scabs, no surface rot. That's the thing you'd expect there to be a load of super clean. You'd expect water to sit between the two pieces of metal. Yeah. But um, they were really clean. In fact, we didn't do anything. Yeah. Bravo, Aldi. Well, this is what Bravo. you get. German engineering. And uh, to be fair, I mean, there's a couple of little spots that we've had to sort out. Um, so all we've done is I got the whizzy wheel out on areas and uh, cleaned them back off. Uh, we used some hammerite crust. Crust, yeah. So it um, got rid of the. Or, What's it called? How's it do? What's it work? So rust in inebriator, inhibitor, yeah. something like that. Basically, it gets rid of it from being rust. It's meant to be a chemical reaction. It turns the rust purple and then eventually black. And then it's solid again. Yeah, so, so it gives you a, a fresh base to start working on again. And then we um, zinc primed it afterwards. And uh, straight hit it with a raptor. And as you can see, I mean... We're not lying. As you go closer, you can't see where there would be 
any parts. I think probably the hardest job was trying to, because obviously with each can, you're trying to mix up an exact amount in bottles that are black. Now, if they gave you a clear bottle where you could actually see where you're filling up to, so you are literally eyeballing it each time. And we actually used four cans of Raptor first, but our supplier could only do... Cobra. Cobra. And you actually said it was a better system uh, for mixing, yeah, didn't you? Cobra was printed in metric, so the Raptor was... Uh, eight, eight ounces of the hardener and then however many ounces of the actual Raptor and I don't know what ounces are. Yeah. I, I'm millilitres and litres. <laughs> there you go, exactly. So our problem was just trying to um, measure it out to get it even. Sometimes it might come a bit um, lighter on one coat and another coat got a bit darker. But as you can see... Well, that was our poor preparation. We didn't buy any mixing cups. Yeah, That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the worst thing is, isn't it? It is that when you look on the pack, go it literally says you can put, you fill up, you've got the liquid, you pour your hardener in, and then you top it up to a level with the paint, um, and that's what we've done. But on occasions, came out a bit thin. But was it the fourth, the fourth bottle of Raptor? We tried to be, we tried to cheat it and spare some of our colour for the Cobra tins. <laughs> that wasn't. It was more like. Laguna Seca blue, then this poor Aldi blue. Yeah, and the, and the problem is, because you're on a time frame, you are under the gun to yeah. do it. You've got to get on, get it done. You've got an hour pot life once you've mixed your colour in the gun. So if you're making mistakes and then have to undo anything, or gun blockages like we had in the first gun, etc., etc., you end up doing a whole lot of running, which you didn't expect you would be doing. And where we are, we're an hour away from any shop. Yeah, our unit, as you can see, we are, wildlife is the closest thing that we've got, basically. There ain't nothing else around here. So a run to somewhere, you haven't got the time to do it. That's why my poor other half had to do it. With a hole in our ceiling, after a plumbing mishap with a, another trade company that was around there. But anyway, so that is, that's Arch Tubs done. Wrapped the whole floor. That gives us such a good base for this car. I mean, with everything that we've got, all new bushes, all new brakes. We'll put new brake lines on it. What are the brake lines that you get? I can't remember what I've got. That's that stuff that is copper, but it isn't. It's a copper alloy. Yeah, it's the one that doesn't rust, so it won't go green. It won't go horrible. It will look like that. The one that you put a dress on when you buy it. Yes. Give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good stuff. So with that all underneath it, everything's been powder coated and restored. So the floor of this, you probably won't see much of it after this. Well, I'll put a couple of videos, but once it's on the floor, you'll sadly uh, probably miss most of the hard work. Yeah. It's one of those, well, eventually when I get the lift installed, that's what we'll do. Once we get the lift installed and we come to another video, we'll get some images from underneath and show you it all with all the fresh running gear, etc., etc. So. That is, so far we're on a week that we've, Tom took off to join my week off to give us a hand doing this. We started on Monday, this is Thursday. So Monday was, and now Monday and Tuesday were short days to be fair, with other parts of life that we have to get on with. We were dinner dating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we spent more time eating than we did <laughs> um, getting on with a job in hand. So in the first couple of days, we probably spent six hours and we got a good start with the tubs which you should have seen in the previous video. Um, we finished them up pretty much yesterday stroke today, didn't we? Today was a finishing up piece, sealed the inside of the arches to make sure that they're good for go, good for good. And uh, yeah, today, yeah, you might wonder why we're outside, but rightfully Tom said, with the way that, I mean, I'm covered in this stuff and I weren't even doing it. This stuff does go absolutely everywhere, doesn't it, Tom? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so with two other cars in the unit and a monumental amount of stuff in there, the last thing we want to do is start covering things in Raptor. But yeah, so... And Cobra. And Cobra, yeah, sorry, Raptor and Cobra. So yeah, we've now got the task of putting it on all fours again, getting it back in the unit before it rains because... We've risked it. We've lucked out massively. The wind with the uh, covers has been an absolute nightmare, though. 
They have been flapping around like no business. But she's done. I'm extremely happy. Yeah, should we get it level? Yeah, go on and get it level. Oh yeah, mate, that looks... I Honestly, from a man behind the camera today, I am buzzing to see those 19 inch 1552s tucked into the archers. Especially now, when you can imagine, I'm not going to do it, but with all that peeled off, so you've got the Santorini blue with the Santorini blue all behind. BC's silver chassis. Yeah, it's going to look epic. So, this Liverpool fan wants to get home. <laughs> it's time to get home. See you on the next one. Cheers for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.